Hi everyone, this is Linda, and somebody had asked in the, my Husqvarna Viking Epic and Ruby 90 owners Facebook page about doing a 3D flower that I had done. So I'm going to share that here with you, and it can be done, it was filmed in the Epic too, but it can be done on other embroidery machines. The process is basically the same. So we're going to take an applique flower and create it into a 3D flower, and I filmed it on the Epic too, but it can be done in other machines. You need, these are the supplies you need in order to get it done and and let's get started okay so somebody had asked how do you make a 3d flower kind of like what I did on the cards that I had shown earlier and so to do this it's pretty simple um, I'm going to create two designs I'm going to create this one and then I'm going to enlarge it a little bit and create this one and sew that out and then I'm going to sew it together now this particular stitch was done using my software but I'm going to pick on another one that's just going to attach all of it together so the first one we're going to do is this now when you look at this design if you look at the color palette it actually has two steps over here and the first step is going to sew just on the stabilizer and then I'm going to add fabric to the top I'm gonna to add fabric here and on the back side and then when I'm all done because this is a lightweight tear away I'm just gonna tear all that away and I'm gonna cut around the flower so that I get it now if you look it is kind of a raw edge but it's okay for this particular um, design so hang on a second I'm gonna sew out the first step okay so I have sewn out the first step and it's just only on stabilizer remember that it's only on stabilizer and it's that first colors change and if you notice it's I've un I've actually unhooked it from my machine but I still have this bobbin thread here so I'm gonna just cut that bobbin thread and then I'm going to take a piece of fabric that I put a couple of little pieces of tape on and I'm going to tape that to the back so it covers that first step my tapes getting worn out sorry but the idea is to get it so it stays you could use temporary spray you could use whatever you wanted I just tape it down in place then the other one I want to do is I need to put a piece of fabric up here on top you could go through and base that down but for this small of a design I'm not going to um, in case you didn't know you could do that I'm in the middle of a design I could actually select here and actually base that down and in place um, but for this I'm not gonna bother um, but I just want you to know you can do that so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew out this next color now it's a little bit longer so um, I'm gonna sew that out and then I'll show you what I do next okay so the design is all stitched out and I used white on the back it's not a big deal but if you wanted to match that color on the back you could do that um, it might make it a little bit nicer but I'm just gonna unhoop it and I like to tear away first because I get big nice big chunks of tear away and tear it away and then I'm going to just trim all around this so give me a sec okay so I have that all trimmed up and ready to go now I could have cut this a little bit further out and then just taken my finger and actually frayed those edges so it would give it a little bit different kind of look um, I don't get real careful with this but you could if you had more of a fraying fabric like a blue jean or something along those lines it might fray very nicely but there's my first step so I have this ready to go and what I need to do now is I'm actually going to go out of my design here Get this set up a little bit again out of here and I'm going to get rid of I and I'm going to keep this design but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it just a little bit larger um, because I want it to kind of show a little bit differently on the back so I'm actually going to go to a hundred by hundred hoop instead so I'm just gonna go the 100 by 100 you could do the metal ha hoop you could do whatever you wanted um, it's up to you but I'm just gonna leave it at the 100 by 100 hoop I'm just using my standard hoop and I want to make this just a little bit larger and for this you can just scale it rather than resize it but if you wanted to resize it you would come down here and choose to resize I'm just gonna make it a little bit larger 
And when I use, when I scale it, all it's doing is it won't increase my number of stitches, it just makes it a little bit larger. And you can only go 20%. If you wanted to resize it, you could actually increase it a little bit more or a little bit less. It will readjust those stitches. But for this simple of a design, I'm just going to scale it and it's just a little bit bigger than the other one. So, um, give me a sec. Okay, so I'm going to stitch this out and I just found a scrap piece of fabric. What I like about this particular design and this particular one is because it does have those two different colors. This first one is going to do just that beginning stitch um, just so I know where to lay my fabric and then it'll do this one. What I like about that first stitch is it'll tell me whether the piece of fabric I have is big enough or not and if I need to go larger. So I'm going to go ahead and move on and I'm going to do that first stitch out. So I'm going to hit go and move forward. Oops, forgot to tell you. What I did is I now have a piece of tearaway stabilizer, or a cutaway stabilizer rather than a tearaway this time. It's going to be whatever you're going to be applying this to. If you're going to be applying that 3D flower to a card, it probably makes sense that you use a good cutaway. Um, if you're going to be doing it to a sweater or something like that, you want to use it, use something a little bit differently than what I'm doing here. But I'm just going to put this on blue jean and then I can take this sample and use it for something else later on. Okay, so I have the first color stop completed and um, on this particular design, it always starts in the center and I like to cut that piece out. Um, not that it's that big a deal because it's going to get covered up anyway. Um, so I just like to cut that out. Um, so I'm going to audition my piece of fa fabric and I'm going to lay this on here and I think it's probably going to be just fine. I love using up my little scraps. Scrap. Now what I could do if I wanted to is actually let it do color number one again and then I can stop and actually cut away because I need it to look a little bit smoother around the edges. So I'm going to sew out color number one again and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have color number one done and I'm going to take and I'm going to trim now um, around this outside edge of my design just so that it's there. It's not that big a deal. It's just letting you know that you can stop now and and actually um, trim this away. So I'm going to do that. One of the things I learned a long time ago when you're trimming for an applique or something like that is making sure that your fabric is actually laying, your hoop is actually on a flat on a surface. It makes for a nice clean, a much cleaner um, cut. I'm using snipping these cute little uh, snipping shears on this particular one, but I have actually used um, these, um, which is kind of curved around, and you can use those too. It's personal preference. I love those little snipping tools because it, or the the snipping one, because it kind of it's not as hard on my hand. So I'm gonna finish doing that. Come on. So I've got that all trimmed and I'm going to do the second color um, where it's actually going to put some detail in it. I decided I wanted the detail even if it is on the back flower. Um, still wanted it there. So I'm going to re I'm going to reattach and sew that out. So I'm all done doing that stitch out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the hoop and go back to the main part and then I'm going to go and find a little center piece that I want to go in the center here where I'm going to attach this one to the other one. So you you know kind of fun you could put a little sequence stitch in there you could do a couple of different things but I'm gonna find an actual little design kind of or a sewing machine stitch that I can actually use there so hang on. Just a couple of other things so I went and found this design now I found this in the mini designs that if I go up here and find my designs it's actually menu N and that's gonna be the same in all the the epic the epic 2 and the um ruby 90 but i just wanted it a little tiny centerpiece and i decided i was going to choose uh, this little guy here and it's hard to see him because of the color that he is so i chose him i actually chose oops close that and he's down here in the center but see how he's kind of hard for you to see so i'm going to show you something real quick i'm going to hold down 
I'm going to come down here where the little grid is at. And I'm going to hold that down. Now, on the Epic 2 and the Ruby 90, I'm sorry, the R Epic, I'm um, the original Epic, it's in a different spot. So you would actually go to the back to your joyous sewing to get to this particular thing. And so I'm going to just change it to a light blue so you can actually see it. Now, I'm not going to restitch this out again, but I have it there for placement purposes. So can you see that a little bit better? The other thing I can do is I can shut off my grid and it's actually there. So we, if it if you can see that, that's where it's at. Um, you could change that to other colors. You could change it to different things. And if you've ever noticed when you're doing freestanding lace, sometimes what happens is because the freestanding lace is actually white and you've got a white background, you can't see it. So by changing your color, you can do that. Um, so I have that now where I want it. And I'm going to, I don't care about this being here anymore. So I can select that and I can actually trash can it. So all I have is this, and all I care about is that that other design was there when I needed to figure out where to place this because I have not unhooped this fabric or this design. I haven't done anything with that. I just need to know where to place this and move on. So hang on a second. Okay, so I'm going to hit go on my machine and I'm going to reattach my hoop and I'm going to go forward. I did change the thread to a darker color just so it will show up a little bit. So I'm going to do that and now deciding how you really want this to be is going to be personal preference. So if you want them to be mirrored just kind of on top of each other, I kind of wanted to move just a little bit and then I'm just going to kind of look to see where my first stitch is going to be. If I look at my screen, the first stitch is going to be right dead center. So I'm going to make sure that that is like dead center onto this guy right here. I'm just going to play a little bit. And if you want, you could actually tape that thing down so it didn't move on you. I'm not going to. I'm going to take a chance. So we're going to sew this, do this stitch of that little squirrel. So there he is, all done. And he's 3D. Now, he's not perfect, but for this purpose, you can play with it and use your little design positioning and, and move it around to where, where you want it. But I was just trying to get this done so that you could see how to do it. It's a pretty simple little process. And you could do that with any of the applique type of designs that are in your machine um, or off of the library or anything else. But like I said, it's a pretty simple process.